the Southern society was much less equal in the sense that we use equality or inequality today. They had slave owners and non-slave owners, whereas uh, the North- What was the percentage? Do we have any numbers? Yeah, yeah. We have 80% of the whites down South did not own slaves. Huh. And, and only- 80%. Only, yes. And okay. only 5% of Southerners were, were, were big slaveholders. So- Mr. Lowenstein, during the break, uh, you and I were talking about uh, uh, President Lincoln's second inaugural address uh, and sort of his own evolution. I'd love to for you to share that with uh, our audience, please. So one thing that happens to Lincoln during the war is he's in increasing pain over the uh, numbers of lives lost. This is just a horrific bloodletting. He feels personally uh, just just he's mortified by it. Uh, he says he says at one point in his speech in, in Philadelphia, he, he, he fears that the heavens are wreathed in black. Wow. Um, and he begins to look for a, uh, a, a, a as, as human beings do, there must be some purpose. You know, there, there, there must be some higher purpose. He's not a, um, a religious man in the, in the sense of any organized, uh, of course he's, he's Protestant, but, but um, he, he was not a big church goer. He was not affiliated with a particular uh, a church. Mm-hmm. But he begins to speak of the purposes of the Almighty, that that um, uh, as if as if uh, only Almighty, hopefully Almighty, can explain what we on earth can't explain as some justification uh, uh, for this horrible bloodletting. And he finally finds it in the second inaugural address. The second inaugural is on March fourth, eighteen sixty five. Uh, the war is going to end just about exactly one month later. And of course, Lincoln's life is going to end uh, just four days uh, after that. So not you know, he knows he's towards the end of the war. The slaughter on both sides has been horrific. He doesn't know that he's almost at the end of his life. And he says, he says all knew that this, he talks about the slavery interest. This was somehow the cause of the war. So somehow, not... Not that it was the one cause, the only cause, the thing that brought them to war. It was somehow behind it. He's, he's careful to respect the nuances of history. And then he says that it was the, he envisions the war as being the punishment that God meted out to North and South hmm. for the crime of slavery, for the three, 250 years of the bondman's toil. He says, and if, if God wills it, it will go on till every cent that had been earned through the slave trade and the owning of slaves was frittered away. Uh, and, and so he recasts the war as being divine punishment to the North and to the South uh, for the crime of slavery. And if not for a, as not a, an initial cause, as a holy purpose, uh, he recasts the war uh, as a punishment for slavery. That's a profound that statement evolution yeah um, i was going to say that's a profound statement for a man who is not necessarily devoutly religious right very profound yeah but um you know suffering uh suffering brings people to um uh deeper and and um uh, uh thoughts and 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 thoughts about the afterlife and the divine exactly. and the purpose and 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 um he was suffering yeah, I know. Um, finding a reason for why all of this happened. Uh, correct me with some numbers here. I don't remember these uh, offhand. Uh, you know, we're talking about slaughter well, here. And obviously, this, this is the coloration he puts on it retrospectively. Yeah, yeah, of it's course. Beautiful yeah, beautiful poetic coloration, but we have to understand it. He's not saying this in 1862. He's saying this at right. the tail end of it in 1865. Right. Um, if I remember correctly from my readings, about 675,000 or so Americans died in the Civil That's War. Right. That's more than World War One and World War II combined. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it's World about War... hundred thousand or so in World War One, and about four hundred fifty thousand in World War Two. Four fifty sounds right to me. Yeah, without stealing a look at my cell phone, which I will not do. I thought World War One was closer to two hundred, but two hundred. But you're still, you're still right. You're still yeah. right. Yeah. Wow, and, that is and amazing. the country, of course, the country, you know, is was obviously immeasurably better, bigger. Uh, in, in those during those wars, and and we're combining the total, we, and we still don't get there. Exactly. So six hundred seventy-five thousand 
was a much bigger proportion of our population in the 1860s. And um, wow, well, they, don't forget they're dying at the hands of fellow Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Dying at the hands of fellow yeah. Americans. Uh, it really was a slaughter. Um, Mr. Lowenstein, um, let's let's use contemporary politics to go back to history again. Um, Ms. Nikki Haley recently said that the Civil War was about basically how the government was going to run. Um, was there anything about how the federal government was run by President Buchanan right before President Lincoln that you that could no, instigate no, look, a war? I mean, no, look, the, 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 slavery, the divide over slavery gave rise to a whole host of divides. Uh, the South was agricultural, the North was industrial, uh, slave labor uh, fitted uh, agriculture much more. It wasn't clear you could really run uh, industrial plants, railroads, and so on, uh, um, factories with large numbers of slaves. The South was fearful of going into that sort of uh, economy. Uh, they didn't. They were not anxious uh, to have. They were not eager to have a public education. They thought. Uh, wow. You know, there, there, a quotation in my book from a Virginian in the 1600s saying, um, uh, you know, we, we don't want, I don't want public education here for hundreds of years. We hope they never come here. They felt it would, it would poison minds of, of, of young Southerners, uh, and particularly poor whites. Uh, yeah. they, they were desperate uh, to preserve the fiction that slavery was good for everybody, uh, even the slaves themselves, um, uh, but, but particularly the poor whites who they knew uh, they would have to call on uh, to defend uh, slavery someday if it ever came to that. Uh, so uh, there were all uh, sorts of, uh, the Southern society was much less equal you know, in the sense that we use equality or inequality today. They had slave owners and non-slave owners, whereas uh, the North- What was the percentage? Do we have any numbers? Yeah, yeah. We have 80% of the whites down South did not own slaves. Huh. And, and only- 80%. Only, yes, and okay. only 5% of Southerners were, were, were big slaveholders. So, you know, if you discount the ones who had maybe a slave or two to help with the garden out back or something, didn't have a plantation, yeah. uh, you know, one out of 20, what we think of with the, with the uh, Gone with the Wind, the Rhett Butler type mansion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so they really needed the support. The, the, the aristocracy really needed the support of uh, lowly, you know, low, lower class whites to support them in any conflict. The, but the, to, to answer your question, there were all sorts of differences in society uh, that the difference over uh, slavery informed. The North tried to pass a bunch of bills for a Homestead Act, uh, to, uh, for instance, was one of them, where the government would give land, you know, if you just if you'd farm it for five years. They wanted to fill the territories with this. South didn't want that. They wanted to fill those territories with slaves. So, so the divide over slavery kept the Congress from passing a Homestead Act. Uh, uh, same thing. Uh, oh, they uh, wanted to expand their cotton plantations, essentially geographically. Exactly, exactly. Um, huh. Same thing. Um, the North wanted to pass the moral, uh, what became the Moral Land Grant Act, to form colleges on, on federal uh, lands. Uh, they wanted to pass an, uh, a Department of Agriculture. Uh, Jefferson Davis uh, to, to help uh, farmers. Uh, the, the South was mortally afraid of any expanded federal government because as as one a Southerner said in the, in the 1830s, he said, um, uh, a government that builds canals can more easily emancipate. We don't want a strong federal government. Once they start doing things, you know, they're going to go to where we don't want them to go. So there were differences in the conception of government, what government could do, what government should do. But that had nothing to do with what happened in, um, you know, in, in, I mean, the, in the immediate cause in, in, in 1861, I think, was, was the one we discussed. Um, Mr. Lowenstein, um, you and I talked about a year ago um, about your book, Ways and Means, and, and uh, I'll provide a link for our listeners to, 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 to listen to that episode. I've read your book, and the reason I bring it up is, is now that you bring up uh, poor white Southerners, it reminds me of your book. Reading your book, it was about economy and how the, the, the you know the North and the South f tried to finance the war. One of the things that I went away with 
uh, I, I don't think it's a stretch, uh, but you can correct me. Uh, it, the the war at, didn't seem to be a fight between the North and the South. It was more like the North fighting the elite of the South. That's how it started. And then the poor whites got sucked into this. Because as I read your book, the poor whites were doing really badly in their lives. They were doing really, really badly. It was, it was really a, a, a war, I think, between two different types of civilizations. Uh, you know, one of them was was uh, more what we would call middle class. They had um, uh, you know town squares and 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 village meetings. Um, they had public facilities, uh, libraries, lyceums, uh, and so on. What's a lyceum? I don't know what lyceum that is. was a place where people, speakers would go. Lincoln would speak at the Springfield Lyceum and so on. Oh, okay. They had a sense of community, and you know, in the town square, around the town. Um, uh, they shared information about crops with each other uh, and so on. There was a sense of civic society yeah. uh, in these little towns in New England, Pennsylvania, New York, and so on. The South were organized around large plantations, very rich people, and and everybody else. And the you know there's a um, the, the, the descriptions of these of these uh, poor Southerners living in these tar shacks, standing at the side of the roadside when a the northern wrote home his descriptions of them right before the war, and uh, their, he described their hands in their pockets as if they didn't even have the the impetus to shield their their eyes from the sun. You know, they were that, wow. that uh, backward. There were, there was no uh, industrial progress. Uh, you know he saw you know mules trying to to pull stuck wagons out of the mud and the tar. It was just a, a backward society. And the South was really afraid. Of progress, because because progress could mean um, uh, ultimately uh, emancipation. Um, the, the South was uh, petrified. The Southern leaders, the uh, secession came wholly from the slave owners. It was their project. They controlled the legislatures. Uh, a few, almost none of the states had referendums. They didn't want it to go to a popular vote. And in the correspondence between the leaders, they said um, it, it will never pass. It's a very interesting comment from. Uh, a man named uh, Mr. Brown, of, of governor of Georgia, uh, right around the time of secession. And he said, um, the poor man's best government is slavery. The poor man's best government is slavery. So not roads, not not railroads, not um, uh, uh, you know an act to bring colleges to the people, not a homestead act uh, so they can have land to farm, education, all the things that Lincoln wanted to bring. What he meant was, if we have slavery, you, the poor whites, are at least one rung up above the bottom. You know, that's what we're offering you. The poor man's best government is slavery. And a, a man, a North Carolinian who was a, a lower middle class, but educated a North Carolinian, hit and row and helper, uh, wrote a book uh, a few years before the South, before the, before the Civil War, called The Impending Crisis of the South. And he, what he did was he compared the average incomes in, in North Carolina and New York, in Georgia and, and Massachusetts. He did pair all states, state by state, education, industry, Income and so on, and he said, "Yeah, you guys are screwed. You, you, you the poor whites, you're getting a bad deal here. This is this is a government, an aristocratic government. It's not working for you. It's working for themselves. This slave society it not only doesn't it work for the blacks, but his audience didn't much care about that. It doesn't work for the eighty percent of whites who didn't own slaves. The book was banned across the South. <laughs> I it, bet it, it, it caused it caused a tremendous, uh, you know, uproar and." You know, in fact, there was a there was a huge fight because um, when um, uh, uh, John Sherman of Ohio uh, was uh, nominated to be Speaker of the House before the war, and Southerners were still in the House. This is uh, General Sherman, Sherman's brother. This is German, General Sherman's brother. Yeah, but, but John Sherman had been in a list of um, of uh, representatives who had endorsed the book. I'm sure he never read it. Uh, he was not particularly liberal on on, on race relations. But, but there was a fight for nearly six months, and then finally they, they just couldn't get his nomination to because anyone who would, who would endorse this book, whether he read it or not, <laughs> was persona on the ground of Southernism. But this, this book got really um, at, at their weak spot, you know, much more than critiques. There were plenty of critiques, and, and I go through some of them, uh, from Northerners of the Southern society. But to have one of their own, you know, uh, saying, um, you're betraying us, you're betraying us. This really got it at their weak spot. So had they uh, held some sort of referendum, 
do you think uh, poor Southerners would have voted against going to war? Uh, I, I, I because do. the race. Uh, I don't know what kind of race complicates they, this. You know what kind of propaganda they would have been subject to. Yeah. Uh, how free the balloting would have been. Yeah. The supervise and so on. You know, we, we saw that happen in elections in the South in a latter period regarding African Americans, but but they had no uh, they had no economic interest in it. Now, you know, would they have been deluded? You know, once once the shooting started, it was different because then. Then the aristocrats were able to convince uh, Johnny Reb, well, you're fighting, you know, for the honor of the South, for your own territory, yeah. people, and so on. Yeah, uh, that 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 changed uh, that game. But um, you know, would they have realized it is a hard question. But they really had no uh, ec economic interest. In fact, in areas that were not uh, deep South states, for instance, in North Carolina, there was a tremendous amount of resistance to the war as it went on. And there were areas of North Carolina backwards that were basically in virtual rebellion uh, to oh, the Confederacy. Wow. Rebellion that, that, that the Confederate Army didn't dare go into. I mean, they were they were in, in, in tacit rebellion. And they, there were letters uh, uh, back and forth between the governor and, and, and uh, various people that say, you have to get your people in line. You know, what you're doing is, is you're, you're, you're an insurrection against the insurrection. Wow. <laughs> um, and um, because um, they... they you know, they felt they were being um, they were being starved, and 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 for what end they began to say, and and, and um, so uh, they began to have trouble, uh, particularly backwoods areas, mountain areas. You know, not the low lying deltas yeah. where there were huge cotton crops, where it was slavery was so uh, uh, much a part of the economy. Yeah, wow, that's interesting. Let's take a break here. Stay with me, and Mr. Lowenstein, as we get into the perspective. 